Something that's really common on engineering drawings is a primary datum that is a flat surface with a flatness tolerance on it. Uh, but if you go and talk to the design engineer that made the drawing, it might they might not have a great logic for why they picked that specific tolerance. So in this video, I'm just going to chat about some of the things that I consider before I assign a tolerance to a flat surface. So chapter 5 in the standard is where all the information on flatness is. But if we're talking about flatnesses that applies to a surface, there's really only two paragraphs and one image. You'll see flatness callouts all over the standard, but this is where the definition is. So I'm not going to go too much into the definitions or the measurement techniques of flatness, since there's a dozens of videos out there already. But I'll go over it quickly. Um, so imagine you had a cube like this or something with a flatness of 6.5 millimeters which I know is a really large tolerance, but I think it'll be useful for demonstration purposes. It might come out looking like this. And if we were able to disappear the body and just have the plane, so this is what the top surface would look like. And this is when you're measuring flatness, what you are looking at is just the surface, basically a 2D, well, I guess it's 3D technically, but it has no thickness. Just this element is what we're looking at when we're talking about flatness. So if you wanted to know what the true flatness was, you would put a plane on the highest points and another plane parallel to that high plane at the lowest point. So the distance between these two planes is 6.46 millimeters. So that would be the true flatness of this part. The measured flatness, if we were to do it with a CMM, might be a little bit different. So I've put these little points here, which is similar to how a CMM might sample the surface. And because the, the points don't go all the way to the edges, you're not going to get a full, visib full visibility of what the feature actually looks like. If we were to look at what the CMM sees, you're only getting a portion of that. So if you remember, it was 6.46, I think, before. The CMM would measure 4.14 millimeters of flatness. So let's also look at what it would look like if we were to use like a dial indicator instead of a CMM. Because a lot of the time, people just go over a surface and sweep it with a dial indicator. One would level the surface with some leveling cones or something like that and come across the surface with the dial indicator in some pattern. The distance between the high and low surface in this scenario, because again it doesn't go all the way up to these high points, is going to be slightly different again. So this one's measuring 5.75 millimeters. So just by virtue of the way that this hypothetical sweep happened, it actually measures a little bit closer to the true uh, flatness, but it's still not exact. Before I move on from the sweep measurement, notice how the leveling points are distributed. They're all kind of close to the extremities of the surface. And there's a reason you want to do that. Let's say you push them all to one side or you push them all towards the center you can end up with a really distorted view of what the flatness looks like. So this is still that same sweep profile. It's the same part in CAD, but the planes are actually 10.95 millimeters apart in this scenario. So now that we've gone over all this, let's kind of get to the point of the video. How do I use this information to make good drawings? There's a couple different ways to go about it. The easy way, is if you happen to be using something that has a manufacturer's requirement. So let's say you had two parts that you've designed and you're sticking them together. The interface is going to be sealed with a gasket or an RTV sealing compound. A lot of these things will have a flatness requirement. So they'll tell you what kind of gaps they can, they can bridge or seal. So in the case of RTV, 0.15 millimeters, the easiest thing would just be to split that gap between the two parts. And then the worst case gap, if you give each one a flatness of 0.075 millimeters, is going to be this 
0.15 millimeters. If there is no manufacturing requirement, one great way to figure it out is experimentation. So if you've got two parts that you're going to seal with, let's say, a carbon gasket that doesn't have a manufacturing requirement, just add variation in that surface. Could be through a gouge in the surface, could be through debris, until you get to a point where that interface is leaking more than you'd like. And then you can measure it, and that's your flatness requirement. After experimentation, another more one of the more challenging ways to determine a flatness requirement is doing it with math. Uh, so let's say, and I'm not going to go through all the math of this, but just an example. Let's say we've got this pin. It's got a hole through it five, milli five millimeters away from the data may surface, and it mates with a bore. Again, the datum M surface is the bottom, and it's got a hole five millimeters from that surface. Um, notice that the the datum structures on these two drawings are basically the same. I've changed the, the datum letters, but the datum reference frames are basically the same on both drawings. That's a good idea if you've got two mating parts to mirror the uh, datum reference frames and all the numbers. But if these two parts are interfacing and then maybe you need a pin that goes through the two holes to rotationally clock this, this pin here, with a large flatness like this on the primary datums, you could end up with parts that look like this. And the high points on the pin are down here. If you were measuring from a granite plate, this bore in this case is perfectly at five millimeters. And again, we don't, we don't deal with perfect here, but for argument's sake, perfectly at five millimeters from this datum A surface. And then the same thing on the bore, except the high point is actually this middle bit. And we measure this hole here, perfectly five millimeters from the base. Something weird happens in this case. And this is, this is a, why you need to sort of be aware of the flatnesses you're using. Something weird happens here. We get something called datum overlap, which is a pretty advanced topic, but I think it's worth mentioning here. In this scenario, we've got our pin quality has measured both the pin and the bore to be good, but then you go to assemble them. And what happens is the datums overlap and look at that. You might not be able to get your pin through here. How do you deal with that? Well, you got to do the math. You got to, you got to go through the math and I'll do a video on this at some point. It's pretty, it's reasonably simple, but oftentimes what it comes down to, is you just have to pick a flatness at the start. So I picked one here and that was sort of the problem. But you have to pick a flatness at the start and then you pick your positional tolerance and your hole sizes with this in cons like while considering this. The final way to sort of choose a flatness, I guess I called it other. Let's say there's no leak requirements there's no manufacturing requirements. There's no, there's nothing that needs to align that's relating to this flat surface. Sometimes, especially in like an R&D setting, you might just have to pick a random number. But the important thing is that you document it. So if you pick a random large number and then you're working with the part and then something goes wrong, then you can sort of dial that in. Or, you know, on the other side, if you pick a really small flatness and it comes back out of spec. If it's documented that the tolerance can change, then it's okay, I think. The reality is sometimes, especially in an R&D setting, you just have to move quickly on something and you don't know what you don't know. The important thing is document that the tolerance was arbitrary and that it can change in the future. Hopefully that was informative. If it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know. If you want me to go over examples, I'm happy to do so. Um, I just thought I'd end the video on this. I asked Meta AI to help me out with a thumbnail for the video, and this is this is what it came up with. If anyone knows what language this is, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Anyways, yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Cheers.